The Trade is brought to you by ACY Securities, Tim Cahill's official FX and CFD trading partner. Welcome back to Ausbiz. You're watching The Open. I'm Juliette Sali. Let's get you caught up on what traders are watching in terms of the international headlines. Bitcoin, of course, in focus. The SEC finally granting that approval of 11 spot Bitcoin ETFs. It comes as the body begins a probe of a fake post on its X account yesterday, confirming the approval before it had actually happened. In company news, there are reports Skydance Media CEO David Ellison is exploring an all cash bid to acquire entertainment giant Paramount Global's parent National Amusements. However, talks are said to in the early stages and may not result in a deal. More broadly across the Asian region, South Korea will hand down its interest rate decision today with a focus on any signal from policymakers as to when the rate cutting cycle begins. And this as Japanese stocks continue to ride the crest of an increasingly bullish wave. The decay 224, 225 that should be, surged to a fresh 34 year high this week. Well, let's get into the charts, focusing in on Forex. Nick Twidell from FP Markets joins me now up on the desk. Well, I guess a good place to start then on the back of Japan is those big moves in the yen. What are you seeing? There's been some big moves, haven't they? Yeah, uh, and probably the only move we saw overnight in, in currency markets was a bit of yen depreciation, like on the crosses and, and against the dollar. So mm. I think, you know, the yen's probably the place to be for a lot of currency traders at the moment because for the last pretty much this week and, and really the start of the year, we've not seen too many great moves across the rest of the majors. So. Yeah, we've, we've pulled that chart up and as you can see, it's like a, a approaching, I mean, that's a, a very weak trend line resistance, but you've got to throw them in. But that high, that January high that we saw just above 146, it, it's not too far away. And, and we're probably going to talk about it a few times in the next five minutes, but the CPI data is what it's all about today. Yeah. And if we do get a slightly stronger print in that CPI, it, it opens the way for a move back straight up through, through to that 148 level, I think. Okay, so therefore moving back closer to, to 150, I guess, which is uh, where we were holding for so much of 2023 towards the latter part of the year. Exactly, yeah, and I, th I think, you know, certainly this number tonight, if we do get a stronger print, then then that will be the target on a lot of people's, and, and those highs up there at 152 won't be too far away. Um, and, you know, even this time tomorrow, we could be talking about that. Conversely, of course, a weaker print and, and we're back back down in those recent ranges that we've seen. Well, as you say, that is the key focus for everyone in the markets, the inflation print. Um, in terms of what it means for some of the other currency crosses, what do you think could affect the euro here? Um, I, I think, you know, it, it will be key, this this CPI data. Euro's, Euro's sort of been trading in a very, very tight range recently. Um, we're just under that 110 figure. You know, we got that decent move up at the end of December. And as we were talking about that December move, obviously stocks... Stocks went massively higher, and the dollar the dollar got a real thumping from after that Fed meeting. Um, it is key this CPI data. I, mm. I know we've all been talking about it for the last few days, but given and given the message that we got from the New York um, Fed President John Williams last night as well, they they need a reason now. They need to see they need to see inflation coming down and, and coming down a little bit faster. I think to see the cuts that we've got priced in come through in 2024, and if we don't get those, then I think there's going to be a bit of a correction. So. Anything around, I think we're looking at 3.2% for the year-on-year -year data, anything creeping above that, then I think we do start to see a, a, real, a real rethink of what we saw for the last few weeks of 2023. So that, to me, would open the way for euro to probably come down again, and we'd probably see euro approaching that 107 level over the next few weeks. And then, you know, conversely, again, if we are seeing that inflation number coming lower and, and we start to creep under that 3% level for the year-on-year, for CPI, then we're going to attack those levels to the top side. And as you can see, sort of just above 111 is probably the first target. What about the Aussie? Anybody lucky enough to be going overseas? I mean, it's related to CPI, it's related to the greenback, but it's also related to the commodities markets and iron ore is coming off a bit. It is, yeah. And so I think we're going to see a little bit of pressure on the Aussie as well. So the greenback's still going to dominate that Aussie story for the time being. But I, I think, and I was listening to, to the guy on before, we are going to start to see divergence from central bank messages this year. Mm. And that's where we're going to start to see some real opportunities in, in the market. And as you can see, like the Aussie is, let's be honest, pretty boring at the moment. We're <laughs> mid-range. Um, it's got scope to move back up to that sort of 68.50 level, and it's got scope to maybe crash down through that 66 level. 
I'm on on the dollar bullish side of things, and I'm, I'm, I'm a bit of a bear for the Aussie. So it adds up to me that I think these aren't too bad levels to, to work into some short positions. But like I said, we're middle of the range, right? So we've got to see what that CPI gives us. We've not got great levels from where we're sitting at the moment. I think there's a fair amount of options interest around that 67 cent level as well at the moment, and that's keeping us tied there. Don't think we're going to see too much movement in the Aussie until the CPI tonight. I know you look at the, at the charts more closely, but in terms of you know fair value, a lot of people are saying we're potentially here already. It's always a bit of a. There's always been this question mark on the Aussie, and it's yeah. one thing that pops up is, is fair value comes up a lot more on the Aussie than any other currency. Yeah. Maybe it's because we're in Australia. Maybe because um, we care more. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think so. And I, I think sort of like we, it always used to be mid seventies, and now mm. we've sort of moved down into this sort of like uh, the the six big figure on it is a lot more comfortable. So it does feel like we're not at a bad level, but I think we're gonna to have to have a look at how global the global growth story, and if you look at some of the data that came out last week on how the global story, you've got, you've got kind of the Fed painting on the US markets looking very, very bullish at the moment. But if you look at some of the global um, pricing going in, they're, they're looking at quite a restrained global growth story. And, and that's where the Aussie normally gets hit as well. So, you know, our focus is normally China mm. um, and China's still struggling. So to me, there's, there's more reasons to sell Aussie than to buy at the moment. Yeah. Um, it can change very quickly, as we know. But I think from a global growth perspective, we're less reliant on the US for the Aussie story than we are on the rest of the, and the commodities picture. And, you know, you look at oil as well. Oil's been smashed because they're talking demand down mm. very significantly for the rest of 2024. Um, Obviously, we're not an oil country, but it does link up with the rest of the commodity story, I think, in, in, a, in a macro perspective. So I, th I think it's not going to be smooth sailing for 2024. And when those that comes around, Aussie normally gets hit. Yeah. All right. So we talked about the, the euro and, and you did say the divergence in policymakers. We should point out the ECB reaffirmed their policy stance overnight. What about cable, though? What are we going to see from the Bank of England and, and Sterling? Well, I think cable's a little bit more interesting as, as, as well, isn't it? It's, you know, as you can see here, we're approaching those highs. It's not too much of a different story than we got from euro, but we're closer to the highs in cable than we are, mm. than are in sterling. Um, we're gonna, it's gonna be data dependent, I think. So you, you're really gonna be, I think we're gonna see more moves over the first, over Q1 in cable and in sterling data dependent than we will in euro, if that makes a lot mm. of sense. Like we always, you always get a big figure out of cable when you might get 50 points out of yeah, euro. Yeah. Um, and I think that's gonna be the story. And I, I really don't know where it's gonna go at the moment. The UK does feel like it's in quite a pivotal position that it could go, it could surge higher and we could get the sort of story that we're seeing in the US mm. or we could see it get sort of trapped in what we're kind of seeing from Europe then, and we might see it retreat quite fast. So cable to me is, is gonna be as usual the whippy, horrible thing to trade. But if you're on the right side, it's fantastic. Yeah. And if you're the wrong side, it is a very, very painful position to be in. All right, another busy year for you following all of this. I think so, yeah. <laughs> Nick, thanks so much. Nick Thank Twidell you. from FP Markets. All right, time for a short break. Coming up, we're going to take another look at yesterday's CPI data, plus what to expect from all that important inflation read tonight in the US. Paul Brennan from Suncorp joins me up on the next desk next. Stick around. <laughs> The Trade is brought to you by ACY Securities, Tim Cahill's official FX and CFD trading partner.